today's, uh, today's reading will be Ecclesiastes 9 through 12. Ecclesiastes 9 through 12. Moreover, no one knows when their hour will come, as fish are caught in a cruel net, or birds are taken in a snare. So people are trapped by evil times that fall unexpectedly upon them. Good morning, Mesa. Good morning. So today is a day that we take to appreciate our seniors and celebrate them graduating high school. And as a senior, I've been getting a lot of uh, questions lately about what I'm going to do next, what college I'm going to go to, and really what I have planned out for the rest of my life and what I'm wanting to do. And it's made me start to think and realize how focused we can get on the future and not what's going on right now in our daily lives. And in the verse that Andrew just read to us, it describes that we don't know our time and that the time that we're in now is an evil time and that it can happen suddenly like a trap, like it describes with the fish and the bird. We don't know what's next. And if we focus too far into the future, we can fall into those traps that Satan has set out for us through our lives. And if we're focusing too much into the future and not paying attention to the great times that we have right now and the things that we can be doing now to share God's word and his love with others, then we're not, we're not living the right Christian life. We're not living the way he wants us to and not sharing the great gift he's given us. If we turn over to John, 1 John 4, 7 through 9, it says... Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. A lot of times, in like movies or at funerals, when people pass away, there's always the I wish I did this with them or I wish that we had gotten the chance to do this or I wish I could have said this and told them how I felt. And really, if we love the way God loves, then we take the chance that we have with them now and the chance that we're given in the time that we have and we take it to love them and show them our love in everything that we do. Because God loves us, we should love everyone around us, and if we're not focusing on today and what we have now, then we aren't focusing on loving each other. If we're too focused into the future, we're not taking the time that we have now to love each other. For example, after church, a lot of us will group up and we'll fellowship with one another, and if we're not truly there in that moment, we can't appreciate what we have. When when I used to be in Bible Bowl, which was earlier this year, was my last year, um, I would always be sad to go home after I got back from a trip. And the reason would be because I wasn't having as much fun at home as I do in a van with a bunch of, <laughs> with a bunch of the high schoolers. And when I think back about through all the years that I've been in Bible Bowl and all the different experiences I've had, it really makes me sad to think that in those moments I didn't truly appreciate what was going on, how big of a moment that was and how big of a memory that would be for me and how it would affect my Christian walk. It's hard to look back and realize that there were many friendships we didn't appreciate in the moment, but if we had been more present, we would have known how great it really was. If we turn to Jeremiah 1.5, it says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. God knows who we are, and he had a relationship with us before he, we were even born. Before he created us, he had a relationship, and he had a plan for what we wanted 
he wanted us to do with our lives. Just like with Jeremiah, this verse, he's talking to Jeremiah and he's telling him that before I created you, I ordained you a prophet and you're going to go and you're going to be a prophet. Through him, we can do all things and we shouldn't worry about what our future holds because he has a plan for us. If we simply live for him, then his plan can go into action and we can live the life that he wants us to live. My aunt Jenny, my mom's sister, would often tell us if we were on our phone at dinner or on our phone whenever we were just hanging out watching something, she would always yell at you and she would tell us to be present and give you like the evil eye. And she did that because we only saw her for about three weeks out of the year, about two in the summer and one during Christmas. And she knew that those were the only times that she had with us. And she wanted to take advantage of it and she didn't want a phone in front of our face all the time. And so just like God, he, he wants us to be present with him and be there in the moment and live for him because we don't have that long on this earth. We don't even really know if we have tomorrow. We just know that we have today and that we need to live for him today. Romans 5, 6 through 8 says, For when we are still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I really love this verse because it says, while we were still sinners. Christ knows that we're not perfect and he knows that we're awful people and that we always mess up. But he still sent his son to die for us. And so, why can't we live today for him, for someone who loved us that much? Why can't we live now and show that love to everybody else? Finally, Romans 8, 31 says, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? The God who created all things, who created the universe, is for us. And he is right there behind you, rooting us on, wanting us to live our perfect life that he has planned for us. We aren't promised tomorrow, so we need to start living today. And we need to make it count because we might share God's love to someone who might not have tomorrow. We might have tomorrow, all of us might have tomorrow, but if we always think that we have the future, we don't, when it finally does come upon us, like it said in the verse that Andrew read, it's gonna be sudden and we're not gonna expect it. And if we're always looking to the future thinking that we have a future, then we're not gonna be able to live now and share his love with those around us. So what are you going to do with your last today? This is our last May 20th, 2018, and we'll never have today ever again. So focus on today and what you can do to spread God's love. Don't wait for tomorrow. Um, I'm Samuel. I'm going to be reading Genesis 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created uh, him. Man and female, he created them. Good morning. Yeah, yeah, it's on. Good morning. All right, so I'm nervous and I'm going to stumble, but that's fine. So I'm Chris Kingsbury. I'm a junior. I'm not a senior. I'm just glad that I have the honor of being able to come up in front of all of you to be able to do a lesson, go after Landon. Some of you may have never even heard him speak, and then you just heard that. So it's a, it's a pretty big thing, you know. All right. So today we'll be talking about value. So, I mean, you don't need to answer this out loud. This is very personal stuff. But when you look in a mirror, what do you see? What are you thinking when you're looking in this mirror, right? When I'm looking in a mirror, I'm looking at my weight, I'm looking at my face, looking at my hair, I'm looking at all these bodily stuff, just like, oh, that needs fixed, this needs fixed, I need to lose that, right? I mean, I feel like a lot of people do that. It 
that's how the world tells us we need to be. So for the first verse we're going to go to, we're going to go over where Samuel was and bounce around that. Genesis 1, we're going to look at verse 26 and 31. In verse 26 it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Now that's pretty powerful, right? God made us in his image, his per this perfect being that's, that we're going to go be with for eternity. He made us, all of you, in his image. Okay, then we're going to go look at 31. And God saw that all he made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning on the sixth day. Have any of you really thought about that? So all the other days, God's saying, oh yeah, what I made today, that was good. He said when he made us that we're very good, right? I don't think God's one to exaggerate. Do you? All right, so what and who are our priorities on earth too, okay? So I kind of made a three-thing list for us, right? So first to God, God's will to go evangelize, right? And what, what we know we're meant to do. And then to our family, our immediate family, our blood family, like right? our spouse, our kids, and then to our family here, because we're all family. And it's not just us. We have family all throughout the world. You can go somewhere. That's your brothers. That's your sisters. Okay? And then to others, right? We need to bring others into this family, because I don't know about you guys, but I want my family to be as big as possible. I want more people to share this love with. All right? So God changed that up. God put us before his one and only son. Us, these sinners. These beings he couldn't even come down and face. He put us above his son, who is perfect. So imagine your oldest child, right? Like, if some of you don't have a kid, imagine you have this kid, right? This is your blood. It's your oldest child, and I mean... You love this kid, right? I hope so, at least. <laughs> so, you have this kid, and it's either your child's life's on the line or this murderer, okay? This being that you just instantly you think with disgust, this murderer, this person who took another person's life, or your kid that's, I mean, not perfect in your eyes, but, I mean, they're, they're pretty close. So, you get to choose one of these two, if you choose your child, would you give up your child so this murderer could go free? And let me also say that this murderer is also going to be the one that puts your child to death. They're going to beat your child, they're going to mock your child, and they're going to hang him on a cross. Probably not, right? You're thinking, that's disgusting, you wouldn't do that for anyone. You are that murderer. And God, God, his son Jesus, is that son, his only child. He sent down to live a perfect life, right? He came down on this world where none of us have been able to be perfect, and he was perfect. He did nothing wrong, and he deserved none of what happened to him. Yet he did that for all of you. So I want to look at Matthew 27, verse 21. So right now, um, Pilate just finished. They gave up Barabbas, and Jesus has been beaten, and he's on the cross. And it says in verse 46, And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You want to be with your kids through everything they go through, right? You want to be with them. You want to support them. You want to help them. God couldn't even face his son as he was on this cross taking this for you because of all the sin that he got on him. He had to look away from his own son. That's, that's crazy. So we are the Barabbas in this situation. So we're going to look at Matthew 27, verse 21, and that'll, that'll explain it a little bit more. So 27, verse 21 says, But the governor answered and said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Barabbas is this horrible murderer, right? He tried to overthrow the government. He's, he's a terrible guy. And yet, Jesus, is perfect son, like we just already said, they said, no. We said, no. He's going to die. 
and we want Barabbas out. Okay, so I want to do something. Some of you may have seen this on Facebook. I'm not being very original here, but I have a $20 bill, okay? How much is this worth? $20, right? Okay, how about now? How much is it worth? $20. How about if I throw it on the ground, stomp on it a little bit? How much is that worth? $20. It didn't lose its value through any of that, right? Okay, so why if this $20 bill that, I mean, this means nothing to God. He doesn't need this. We, we can give it to further his work, but that means nothing. Why would this not losing its value, why would we lose our value if we're crumpled and beaten by this world? We have sinned. None of us are perfect. And yet we still are worth that much, worth this, his son's life to God. We lost none of our value. We are his children. We are made in his image, and he loves us immensely. I want to leave you with one verse, okay? So this is Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. God loves us, and we retain our value no matter what. Thank you very much.